Good morning, kids. It's Karen Lee coming to you from my living room here in South Berwick, where it's a little chilly today and it's not sunny for the first time in many days. So I'm dressed warm, I'm bundled up, ready to share some time with you. And I have just one book today, it's a good one, called The Wednesday Surprise. It's written by Eve Bunting, B as in boy, U-N-T-I-N-G. If you could get an adult to help you get online and Google an interview with her, She's very interesting. She speaks with this beautiful Irish brogue. She grew up in Ireland and lived there until she had three children. And then, then she and her husband came to California. She has wonderful memories of her father, who was a very rough, tough man, but loved poetry. She remembers him having her climb up in his lap and he would read the poet Yeats to her and explain it. And there's the many rainy days in Ireland and she said when it rained, we read. She has lovely memories of her dad reading to her. And her mother also loved to read so much that even though they didn't have a library in their town, she persuaded a nearby city to loan them some books and she loaned them out to people for a tuppence a piece which i think is like a penny per book um which perhaps practice didn't last too long because her mom didn't keep good notes and wasn't good at persuading people to return books so pretty soon the bigger town had to say i'm sorry we can't lend you books anymore but she grew up surrounded by books and learned to love to read and then to write. Um, she's written about some difficult subjects, race riots, homelessness, and children voted her um, the writer most likely to heal the world. They gave her a great compliment uh, for her book called Fly Away Home which is about a little boy who was homeless. She said, I always like to end my books by giving the reader hope. Donald Carrick illustrated this book for Eve Bunting. He was an illustrator and a landscape architect, and he illustrated many books for his wife, Carol Carrick. Uh, they did 37 books together so he did many books before he died. A couple things about this book. Um, in one, on one page, the grandmother says to the little girl, you're as smart as paint. That's an old expression for saying, you're very smart. And, um, and then towards the end of the book, the girl's father brings her a, a rock that's speckled, and she says like a speckled egg. Some hens do lay speckled eggs. It's like they lay brown eggs and green eggs and blue eggs. Okay. The Wednesday surprise. Let me just grab a, get a, grab a quick drink here. <clears throat> The Wednesday Surprise by Eve Bunting, illustrated by Donald Carrick. I like surprises, but the one Grandma and I are planning for Dad's birthday is the best surprise of all. We work on it Wednesday nights. On Wednesdays, Mom has to stay late at the office and my brother Sam goes to basketball practice at the Y. That's when Grandma rides the bus across town to stay with me. There's Grandma at the bus stop.
I watch for her from the window and I blow on the glass to make breath pictures while I wait. When I see her, I call, Sam, she's here. And he says it's okay to run down, down the long stairs and wait by the door. Grandma, I call. So she must live in an upstairs apartment. Anna, she's hurrying, her big cloth bag bumping against her legs. We meet and hug. She tells me how much I've grown since last week, and I tell her how much she's grown too, and I, which is our joke. Between us, we carry her lumpy bag upstairs. I show Grandma my breath picture, if it's still there. Mostly she knows what it is. Mostly she's the only one who does. There they are hugging when Grandma gets there. On Wednesday nights, we have hot dogs. Have you heard from your dad? Grandma asks Sam. He'll be back Saturday, same as always, Sam says, in time for his birthday. His birthday? Grandma raises her eyebrows as if she'd forgotten all about that. Grandma is some actress. When Sam goes, she and I do the dishes. Then we get down to business. There they are having hot dogs. I sit beside Grandma on the couch and she takes the first picture book out of the bag. We read the story together out loud and when we finish one book, we start a second. We read for an hour, get some ice cream, then read some more. Grandma gives me another hug, only seven years old and smart as paint already. I'm pleased. They're all going to be so surprised on Saturday, I say. Sam comes home, we play card games, and when Mom comes, she plays too. You'll be here for the birthday dinner, Mom asks, as Grandma is getting ready to leave. Oh yes, the birthday, Grandma says vaguely, as if she'd forgotten again, as if we hadn't been working on our special surprise for weeks and weeks. Grandma is tricky. I'll be here, she says. Sam walks Grandma to the bus stop. As they're going down the stairs, I hear him say, What have you got in this bag, Grandma? Bricks? That makes me smile. Dad comes home Saturday morning, and we rush at him with our happy birthdays. He has brought Sam a basketball magazine and me a pebble, smooth and speckled as an egg for my rock collection. I found it in the desert, close to the truck stop, he says. It was half covered with sand. I hold it. Imagining I can still feel the desert sun hot inside it. How long did it lie there? 
What kind of rock is it? His dad has stopped to pick wildflowers flowers from mom. They're wilting and she wants to put them in water. Then dad has to go to bed because he has been driving his big truck all through the night. While Dad sleeps, Sam and I hang red and blue streamers in the living room. We help Mom frost the cake. We've made Dad's favorite dinner, pot roast, and our gifts are wrapped and ready. I watch for Grandma and help carry the bag upstairs. Wow, Sam should feel how heavy it is now. Grandma has brought a ton of books. We hide the bag behind the couch. I am sick from being nervous. Grandma usually has seconds, but tonight she doesn't. I don't either. I can tell Mom is worried about the pot roast, but Grandma tells her it's very good. Are you feeling well, Mama? Dad asked Grandma. How are your knees? Fine, fine. The knees are fine. Dad blows out the birthday candles and we give him his gifts. Then Grandma shoots a glance in my direction and I go for the big bag and drag it across to the table. I settle it on the floor between us. Another present? Dad asks. It's a special surprise for your birthday, Dad, from Grandma and me. Just grab another drink. My heart's beating awfully fast as I unzip the bag and give the first book to Grandma. It's called Popcorn. I squeeze Grandma's hand and she stands and begins to read. Mom and Dad and Sam are all astonished. Dad jumps up and says, what's this? But Mom shushes him and pulls him back down. Grandma has the floor. She finishes popcorn, which takes quite a while, gives the book back to me, and beams all over her face. So Grandma's doing well. I'm sorry, I have a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> My goodness, Mom is beaming too. When did this wonderful thing happen? When did you learn to read? Anna taught me, Grandma says. On Wednesday nights, I add, and she took the books home and practiced. You were always telling me to go to classes, 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 Grandma says to Dad. She looks at Mom. You must learn to reuse, read, you say. So I come to Anna. I giggle because I'm so excited. Grandma reads and acts out the Easter pig and the velveteen rabbit. It's much smarter if you learn to read when you're young, she tells Sam sternly. The chance may pass along with the years. Sam looks hurt. But I can read, Grandma. Mm -hmm. 
Nevertheless, she takes out another book. Are you going to read everything in that book, in that bag, Mama? Dad asks her. He's grinning, but his eyes are brimming over with tears, and he and Mom are holding hands across the table. Maybe I should have read everything in the world now that I've started, Grandma says in a stuck-up way. I've got time. She winks at me. You can see even the cat is in on this. So Anna, what do you think? Was it a good surprise? I run to her and she puts her cheek against mine. The best ever, I say. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed the book. Sorry about my foggy voice today. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.